And now here is a short uh, lecture, a mini lecture, on um, I think the key questions of our chapter 6 reading on ancient Rome. One, what are the key differences between the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire? Two, did Rome fall from outside causes or did it slowly destroy itself from within? Three, were the Romans a colonizing people? Were the Romans unique in this? And how did the Romans treat those they colonized? And finally, how did the Christian faith gain momentum and followers throughout the Roman Empire? So let's take this question by question. And I think you'll agree, this is a nice overview of the key points of, of chapter 6. One, uh, what are the key differences between the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire? Well, the Roman Republic, if you recall... Uh, it uh, was founded on the principles of representation, uh, with the early Romans resisting the uh, royal uh, autocratic uh, authoritarian rule of the uh, Tarquins. Um, uh, if you recall, the Romans resisted um, uh, the rule of one person early in their history. And so Romans uh, prided themselves on the idea of representational government, specifically in the Roman Senate. Uh, one of the famous sayings from ancient Rome was this beautiful uh, Latin quote, Senatus Populusque Romanus. And what it translated to mean was, um, in the name of the Senate and the people of Rome. Uh, what that meant, of course, was that the Senate made law, but it only made law on behalf of the Roman people. Uh, and as you could say that the power came from below. Uh, the people ruled, uh, from the plebeians up through the patricians, the people ruled through the Senate. Uh, but all of this ended with the advent of the Roman Empire under Octavian Augustus. If you, uh, when that's essentially what happened was, power comes from above, namely in the person of the emperor. Uh, if you look at the example of Julius Caesar, uh, Julius wanted all of the, the authority contained within himself. And look at, he was assassinated for it. But eventually, the Roman Empire developed uh, with the first emperor, Octavian Augustus. Laws essentially were issued by the emperor and not the senate and not the people. Uh, our next slide did Rome fall from outside causes, or did it slowly destroy itself from within? Well, I think, again, if you consider the previous slide, you can form an answer. Uh, Rome, as a city and an empire, by the 500s, uh, by the 6th century AD, it lacked the guiding principles it possessed early in its history. Uh, like well, the quote that we wrote down in class the other day, Rome was so sure of itself that it caused its own downfall. Um, we wrote that quote down at the start of class the other day. And I think it's true, isn't it? Rome as a city and as an empire, it lost that guiding principle, the ideals that were present at its founding. Uh, for instance, look at some of the problems that plagued uh, Rome uh, toward the end. Uh, corruption in politics, okay? Politics became all about bribery. Uh, the desire for power goes hand in hand with uh, the idea of corruption in politics. Uh, the army was no longer made of loyal Romans. It was made up of mercenaries, hired soldiers, who were loyal only to the money, not to the, not to the Roman Empire. And then finally, you had ineffectual emperors. Uh, some of the emperors were so cruel and ineffectual that um, uh, they were as themselves assassinated. Um, were the Romans a colonizing people? Uh, uh, were they unique in this? And how did the Romans treat those they colonized? Well, yes, the Romans colonized all around the Mediterranean. Uh, in fact, the Romans called the Mediterranean the Mare Nostrum, meaning our sea. They were, they were so confident of their empire that they called the Mediterranean our sea, like they owned it almost as kind of a humorous thing, the Mare Nostrum. Uh, no, the Romans were not unique. Everybody colonized. Everybody colonized back then. The Greeks, the Persians, the Egyptians, the Nubians, everybody colonized. Everybody possessed colonies. Um, now, sometimes one empire would take over the colonies 
of another empire that they conquer. So, for instance, the Romans conquer the Greeks, and so they take over the Greek colonies. The Greeks conquer the Persians, so they take over the Persian colonies, and so on. Okay? Uh, the Romans always extended rights under Roman law to their colonies, uh, as well as technologies. So, you know, some people actually wanted to be conquered by Rome uh, because it brought with it some pretty good stuff. Uh, you would get roads, you would get technologies like aqueducts, and you would get Roman law, which is not bad considering that if you lived without water and roads, you know, these kind of hassles, right? Um, and so it, it, it's an interesting thing about that period of history is that as long as the populations of the colonies behaved themselves uh, and they didn't cause a rebellion, Rome was pretty tolerant with everybody. Uh, here's some, here are some pictures showing evidence of Roman colonization in other parts of the Mediterranean. What you're looking at in the upper left-hand corner, it's uh, an ancient Roman column done in the Corinthian style, and I took this picture in Israel. And in the bottom right-hand side is a picture of an ancient Roman hot spring. Uh, Romans would go to this uh, hot spring bath uh, in, in England, and it was supposed to help treat uh, problems like arthritis and indigestion and all these things that Romans were plagued with. So they would go and they would sit in the hot water, um, which was uh, 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 rich in minerals, um, and uh, it, would some, it, would, it was supposed to have curative powers. So uh, here in these two pictures, I hope you can see, well, wait, wait a minute, if, if, there's a, if there are Roman ruins in England, obviously the Romans had to get there somehow, and it must have been a colonizing power. And the same with Israel. If the Romans were having, if the Romans were present in Israel, it's because they were a colonizing power. Finally, how did the Christian faith gain momentum and followers throughout the Roman Empire? Three reasons mainly. One, Christianity first appealed uh, to people in large cities. So Christianity was a, was a religion that had a strong appeal in the big cities because that's where you found the poor and the outcast, the very people that Jesus preached his gospel to, okay, and those who hoped for a better world. Uh, sometimes the persecution of Christians occurred uh, because they were accused of treason. Re uh, remember that I told you in class, I mentioned that religion in ancient Rome was often a state religion. In Greece and Rome, religion was often a state religion. So worshiping the gods was something that you were supposed to do as a good citizen. Well, Christians did not worship the state gods because it was against their religion, right? They believed in only one god. And so to worship the gods was, a, to them, it was wrong. It was, it was against their religion. And so in the eyes of the Romans, they were committing treason. They were not worshiping the state gods. Finally, Constantine, the emperor Constantine in the 4th century uh, AD, was the first Roman emperor to become a Christian. Um, his mother was a Christian, and she uh, urged him to convert and become a Christian, so he did. And um, this added official recognition to the Christian faith. I mean, you can't, you can't very well persecute a religion if the emperor of the, em of the Roman Empire is a Christian himself. Um, and so it granted Christianity recognition and protection under the law.